about 6.20. I got out of the hotel a little bit later than I wanted to. I wanted to get out at 6 a.m., but I didn't hear the alarm on my watch because it's kind of faint and my head was under a pillow. But right now I've got to get on Main Street and then I've got to walk along the highway for about an hour before I actually get to the trail. The first real water source is like at 15 miles, so I've got to carry two liters of water, which is four pounds, which is not, not my favorite. I picked up my hiker box yesterday and it had four days worth of food, which if I'm lucky was about six pounds. I've got two liters of water, which is four pounds, and then a canister of fuel, which is eight ounces. So I'm carrying at least 10 or 11 pounds more than I was last night and my feet can really feel it. that there was a bag of banana chips in there that had oh, gone so yeah. wet and oh. moldy. 
everything in there, even sealed or not. Smelled like banana. Tasted. Tasted. It, the, the oh, taste gross. of banana. There's like a bunch of cliff bars. That permeated is the cliff bar wrapper where air could not. I do have to say that hiking with other people makes walking uphill with a 20 pound pack in the blazing sun being dehydrated a lot more fun. I just stepped over the tail of that thing. Did you guys start in Worcester today? No, we started four miles out. We basically camped on the first place that we could camp outside of town. Alright, one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's nobody's birthday. It's nobody's birthday. We don't know if he's singing along or if he really hates it. Oh, yeah. We only brought half. So last night we came into the parking lot next to uh, State Route 90 here. It ended up being about a 22 mile day. And when we showed up there, there was only one gallon of water left, but uh, the trail angels came back with more water and there was a family there, a family of six, I believe, that was hiking the CDT. And it was amazing, but their dog was having trouble so they had to get off trail, so they gave all their water to the cache. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Saw him in Mammoth, he had it again, and in camp in Mammoth, he had bought stuff to make chocolate chip cookies, but then was having to like perfect and modify the recipe to do it on a skillet. <laughs> It was, it was basically Deep just like fried, shit tons of butter. <laughs> fried so just chocolate, like fried chocolate chip cookies. chocolate chip cookies, and they were so fucking good. That sounds so good. <laughs> just like, your child family has it made. <laughs> yeah, I was like the bang on a 12-ounce camera. I was like, is this worth it? I was like, I looked at the photos compared to my phone. And I was like, no, we're just going to And whenever I take a photo, I always, personally, I always find it. Something to get in there? I... Oh, there's been some bees falling. I around. just swallowed a bee. <laughs> I just like <laughs> caught a bee in my mouth. Oh, oh gosh. Took a swig and I felt a chunk in my mouth and I was like, Ooh. what the hell was that? <laughs> so I just spent like an hour and a half enjoying the trail magic down there in the parking lot with uh, Solo and Guru and several other hikers. Doug was there. I uh, had a couple good pancakes. I think I had more syrup than I had pancake, and that was awesome. But um, today was the last day that they're going to be there. I don't know how long they're going to keep putting out the water. If that water wasn't there, I think hikers would have either had to carry up until the homestead, which is like a 25 mile hike from the last water source 
or they would have to hitch into town because the water situation is so bad out here. Like none of the natural sources are flowing and a lot of the cow troughs are just not, not really drinkable. It's only gonna get worse as the season goes on. So I feel really sorry for hikers that start northbound in the coming weeks because I just, I don't know how they're gonna do it. It's gonna be too hot and too dry. But uh, anyway, that was a savior. That was, that was amazing. I really appreciate the people that spend their time helping hikers out because this trail really would not be accessible without people doing stuff like that. Once you get north of the 100 mile mark, there are fewer plants that want to stab you. I've heard a story, I've heard it said I've come to believe that love is a bet Sometimes you win it, sometimes you lose it Sometimes it calls you right in the move Come to my table, come to my bed, go easy my hunger, easy my head Bringing me fire, bringing me water, taking me high, taking me down. Give me your pretty, give me your messy, give me your happy, give me your sad. Re-explain your blisters. So this is the first blister, and oh, once it got too much pressure, it traveled up in between my toes. I was gonna say that's like a blister inside a blister. Yeah, and then this I've one is from today, and it goes around here, and then this one popped the other day. I've just been trying to keep it clean and dry. Let's see here. This one is because the stupid little toe goes under that toe and I step on my own toe. I do that too. Oh, that's the I worst. do that with the pinky the pink. toe. Yeah. yeah, and that's what, so this one looked like a grape yesterday and I popped it because it was out to here, this whole thing. <laughs> and then oh inside gosh. that one is this new one from today. Oh, and then. And then there's the but other wait, foot. there's more. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, you did the same, same thing. Yeah, same heel. thing here, and then it goes in between both of those actually. This one is a blister forming underneath my toenail. I can see you're missing a chunk of skin right yeah. there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that one's going under the toenail. This is, and I what, think, separated you, into oh, you, three. Oh my god, it's oozing right there. <laughs> um, and you didn't. I thought maybe you lost that toenail. Oh no, that one's just stupid. I just, just have a stupid toenail. Messed up. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it like grows okay. inverted. It's super weird. <laughs> it's but this ouch. one was out to here last night, so I popped it. And then this is a new one from today. And then same thing on the bottom. That's a new one from today. This one is oh, actually man. doing okay. But yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, five. I think I had five toenails. Because um, I kept getting blisters underneath my toenails just from the pressure. And uh, then the blisters pop up and the toenails would fall off. And... You know, a friend of mine is considering having one of his toenails or two of his toenails surgically removed. Just because he's. Because they keep falling he's off. Just over it. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. Like, Fuck these toenails. We're, it's funny, we were just talking toenail. about it today. I don't know. To yeah, get right? to like Actually, mess up your foot. That's a great question. No, one, yeah. no one's asked this question until just now. 
It's like toenails and male nipples. Why? <laughs> Why bother? I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's a good point. Yeah. I spent last night at the uh, Borough Mountain Homestead, which is a pretty large trailer park here in the Gila National Forest. Anyway, the owner, uh, Dave, and his wife posted on their Facebook page, and I guess uh, some of the CDT trail pages that uh, they were welcoming hikers. So we got in there last night. Uh, unfortunately, I'd gotten in a few minutes after the store closed, but Pax was nice enough to buy some uh, snacks for us all, so that was really cool. It was really nice to um, have running water, running hot water, a toilet. It had Wi-Fi, so I checked in with my family, sent them some pictures. Anyway, uh, headed into Silver City today. I'm gonna hike to the highway and hitch from the highway. Take some time off my feet. And then tomorrow I'll probably stay a full day in Silver City just to rest up. And then I've got to evaluate whether I can really make this um, Gila River alternate uh, in time to catch my flight next Sunday. And that's about uh, 9 or 10 days away. So I'm just going to have to see if the mileage and the pace that I've been going match up. Um, but, you know, I think if I get a zero day, and today, where I'm only putting in maybe, you know, five or ten miles, um, you know, I might be able to rest up and then be able to push longer miles in that last week. That's what I'm hoping. I just got dropped off by uh, the owners of uh, the Borough Mountain uh, Homestead. Uh, I was walking down the dirt road. I was getting ready to take off my pants and put my shorts on and I heard a car. So I put my pants back on um, and stuck my thumb out and lo and behold, it turned out to be them. And um, Dharma Bum was getting a ride with them. And uh, so I threw my pack in the back and got in and then down the road, we picked up uh, Doug because he needed to get a, uh, a tetanus booster shot at the CVS pharmacy. So now I'm looking for Diane's Bakery because uh, one of the trail angels suggested that as a really good place to eat. I have to uh, look on uh, hotels.com or whatever and uh, find a place to stay for the evening. But uh, it's got to be private and it's got to gotta have a bathtub. spent about a couple hours sitting in that 
nice coffee shop, Tranquil Buzz. Mainly, I just wanted to chill out during the day and um, take it easy, walk around and rest up. I think by tomorrow morning with a good night's sleep, I should be able to, you know, I think I'm gonna be fully recharged tomorrow and be able to make that 30 mile hike up to the Gila River. And then the day after tomorrow, hopefully make the hike into Doc Campbell's and then buy a bunch of resupply there. And, uh, and then it'll be the five day push to Highway 12 and then hitchhike out. You're not just all unemployed people. We're not all no, unemployed. No, I mean, I, no. I get that. You know. <laughs> I kind of wish I was unemployed sometimes, but um, no. It's, uh, some of those guys have taken leaves of absences from their